Hi, we are team Shanxiang and Yingxing, and this is our final project for machine learning. In this project, we are going to use machine learning algorithms to bear on employee attrition issue. This is the agenda of this video, and we will start with introduction first. Employee engagement has become one of the most important topics for organization to success. In recent years, businesses have realized the value of people analytics in making human resource decisions. For example, Rework is an HR analytics platform started by Google to help share and put forward the practice and research of data-driven human resource. With the help of data points from HR department, certain machine learning algorithms can be applied to retain great people and optimize human resource management. Therefore, we would like to look at one important part of people analytics, which is attrition prediction in this project. These are the three questions we want to explore in this project regarding human analytics. With the questions above, we hope to see how objective factors such as commute distance and total working time and employee subjective feelings work together on employee attrition. And more importantly, how can we make better predictions for more effective measures to be taken in advance to retain good talents? Now, we will introduce first our findings and give some recommendations based on our analysis. We found almost all variables are correlated with attrition from descriptive analysis. However, from further exploring using machine learning algorithms, we found certain factors contribute more. For example, previous working experience, overtime working, and monthly income are the top three features, and we could use them to predict future attrition. This suggests that for employee with good performance, the company may need to pay close attention to the identified features mentioned above to identify employee with high probability to leave and then to take measures in advance. Now let's see how we get the results above. First, we will introduce our dataset. We use the fictional dataset created by IBM data scientists. It contains over 1,000 samples with 35 variables. Among all of them, we have five binary variables which we are going to use attrition as our dependent variable, in other words, the label of our data set. Besides, we also have 23 numeric variables and six factor variables. And since it is a fictional data set, we do not have any missing values, which is easy for our future analysis. Before applying any machine learning algorithms, we will first give some descriptive analysis to give you an overview. For the first part, we started the relationship between two variables using package of seaborne plotting and its KDE plot function. In the graphs on the right, we virtualize some of the distributions between two variables so that you can have a rough idea of how the features are distributed with one another. Next, we are displaying six quick findings from this bivariate analysis with dependent variable of attrition. Besides the ball findings, we also have other insights regarding the employees who leave the companies, and all those differences are proved to be significant. Lastly, let's look at the correlation matrix made by Plotly Library and its heat map function. From the correlation plots, we can see that most of the columns are poorly correlated with one another. This is good when making a predictive model since we do not need to deal with redundant features. In the case that we have a lot of correlated features, one could perhaps apply PCA to reduce the feature space. However, in our case, we may not need to do PCA. Getting more familiar with our dataset, we found all independent variables are significantly associated with attrition. So we start to train our models for the prediction of attrition and attempt to find most contributed factors. In the following sections, we will present a few classification algorithms. Here is the outline for the models we are using. They are logistic regression, support vector machine, random forest, and decision tree. Then we will compare these four algorithms regarding their out-of-sample testing accuracy and runtime complexity. Before training the models, we split our data into training and testing set and factorize some factor variables. First model we train is logistic regression model. We use all variables in the dataset and the maximum likelihood estimation which is shown on the right is applied for the training process. 
the out of sample accuracy is 89.9% and is relatively high. However, we could not tell top important features in this case. Then we apply support vector machine to train the model. We were using kernel method. The out of sample accuracy rate is 88% and the cross validation rate is around 83%. The linear uh, SVC model performs much worse with an out of sample accuracy of 70%, but it provides insights on what are the top features. In support vector machine with kernel method, data are transformed by kernel to another space, which is different from the input space as a result of the kernel transformation. Therefore, we get no chance to know what are the important variables. Then, linear support vector classification is added to show weight of each coefficient. It is insignificant in predicting performance, but it provides insights on what are the top features. From the package documentation, weights assigned to the features is only available in case of linear kernel. We assume the higher the absolute value of the weight, the greater it is associated with attrition. Here, we drew the plot of most four um, positive and negative associated features from the plot, we could see workers keep changing companies, live far distance from home, keep overtime working, and haven't been promoted for a long time are more likely to leave. On the other hand, employees who stayed in a long term with current role and current manager and who are older are more likely to stay in one company. This could give some insights on how to build employee loyalty. We try to extend our models beyond class. The first method we apply is random forest. Random forest gathers a group of decision trees and uses their combined predictive capacities to obtain relatively strong predictive performance. Generally, for each random subset, we select random samples from training set with replacement. Build a classification tree on each random sample. Each tree can split on only a random subset from the variables. This model could effectively reduce variance of predictive values. In the random forest classifier, all the variables are selected and the predicting accuracy is 87%. Random forest model is less interpretable, but we get the chance to know features with most importance. And the five most important variables are monthly income, age, overtime working, total working hours, and daily rate. Random forest gathers a group of decision trees. While a decision tree classifier method could use a tree structure to implement ID of KNN and classify data into a tree with pure leaves. In practice, we use gene index to build a card tree. All the variables are selected and cross validation is applied. We choose to have maximum depths of four to avoid overfitting and the cross validation performance is around 83%. Here, we virtualized the tree and could tell what kinds of combinations of parameters have associations with whether people would quit their job. Um, let's look closer at the top two layers. We could tell that overtime working, total working years, monthly income are three most important features in the decision tree. After finishing all the machine learning algorithms, we compare accuracy and runtime complexity and we could tell that logistic regression performs best in both accuracy and running time. However, we should notice that our dataset is fictional and relatively simple. Runtime complexity might be different when more complex real-time data is applied. Last, we will introduce the limitations and feature extensions of this project. Now, all the features are applied without adjustment. However, in the future, we can redo the models, selecting only significant features. Another limitation is since we have a small and fictional sample data set, uh, we can only have less generalizable results. For the future study, more real-life data samples should be collected. The third one is uh, we only have limited dimensions and only structured features are provided. Um, for features, um, perhaps we can explore new dimensions, for example, texture evaluation for a more complete analysis. Thank you, and this is our final project.